We gather in the name of Almighty God to give thanks and praise to God for God's continuous care and love showered upon us. We remember love, the love of God this day on Valentine's Day, and I want to wish all of you from the church family here a happy Valentine's Day. prophets, make yourself known to us as you did to them. Keep us from arrogance that erects barriers against your revelation. Keep us from presuming to know your intentions for us without seeking your counsel, or from supposing that we can teach others when we have ignored your direction. Help us to listen and to respond according to your purposes revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear this call to confession this morning. God is our hiding place, not the one from whom we can hide. The Almighty knows our inmost thoughts and our secret sins. Let us pause to acknowledge the wrong in our thinking and in our acting, lest we waste away in evil. Hear this prayer of confession. God of all people, we confess that our self-centeredness, we confess our self-centeredness and our arrogance. We have seen our advantage as our just due and evidence of your special favor. We have mistrusted others and misinterpreted their intentions. We have ignored sound instruction and failed to exert self-control. In the race of life, we have sometimes given far less than our best. Turn us away from all that hurts and destroys that we may accept your forgiving love and be transformed by it. Hear now our personal prayers and petitions as we bring them to your throne of grace. And hear this assurance of God's forgiveness. When we acknowledge our sin and confess our transgressions, God removes our guilt and forgives all of our iniquity. Hear the prophet's words, wash and be clean. Thanks be to God. Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss D with your Sunday school lesson. Today's animal was submitted by Miss Sally, and she chose the snail. 
And when I think of a snail, I think of snail mail. Well, what is that? That is the mail we get in our mailbox. So if you try to send a letter to Miss D, and even though I only live across town from you, it may take several days to a week to get there. So we call that pace snail mail. Not like email, when you hit the button, it instantly shows up in my inbox. See, snails are known to be slow. And in the Bible, we read that we should be slow to anger. So in James 1.19, we read, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, we read, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So, we need to be slow to anger. How do we do that? When you feel yourself getting angry, count to 10. Or maybe count to 100 by fives. But you're going to count and pause before you do something that could hurt somebody else, like say bad words or punch somebody. We don't want to do those things. So when you're feeling angry, we're going to be slow to anger and pause. Happy Sunday. What you're reading is the story of the transfiguration from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could have bleached them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. He did not know what to say, for they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they, were, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had been risen from the dead. The second reading is from the Old Testament, 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. It's the healing of Naaman. Now Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aaron had go, Aram had gone out, and they had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who was in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you might cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and he said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to cure him of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have this man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. The final reading is again from the Gospel of Mark, from the first chapter, verses 40 through 45. 
It's another story of the healing of a man with leprosy. This time it is Jesus who is the healer. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant, and he reached out his hand and he touched the man. He said, I am willing. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell, see that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and he began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. May God's blessing this day be upon the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of God's holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, open now these scriptures to us. What you would have us learn and carry into our own lives from your message this morning. We thank you for the power of your cleansing, your healing power, your power to forgive. And we thank you, Almighty God, for your love as we receive it today and every day. Amen. What does it take today to become a celebrity? If you are K. Arians, it simply takes a trip to Tampa. If you're watching the Super Bowl last week, Kay Arians, who lives right here in Hanover, Pennsylvania, she is the mother, 95-year-old mother, of the coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Bruce Arians. At one point in the TV broadcast last week, Kay Arians is shown in her Tampa Bay sweatshirt, and it said she was from Hanover, Pennsylvania. Instant celebrity for Kay Arians. Not that she was looking for that. When the game was over, I didn't even see her come down onto the field. Well, she is 95. But she was at the game and saw her son's team win the Super Bowl. Celebrity status right away for Kay Arians. 1985, there was a 310-pound defensive tackle for the Chicago Bears who in a four-week period became a celebrity. A celebrity that, you know, this, he just rose to celebrity status quickly. And you know how he did it? He scored two touchdowns. One catching the ball and one running the ball. William Refrigerator Perry was his name. He became a celebrity and that celebrity status was with him briefly, just very briefly. His, his mother said of him, well, he's a good player, but he's not that good. And his wife, their little uh, parents and siblings and, and uh, par parents and, and spouses, they're a little harder to convince of uh, how good you really are. His wife said, uh, yeah, he, he's a good football player, but I can tell you some things about him that you might not like. But he reached celebrity status. He commanded $750,000 to talk, just, just to give a speech. Now, it didn't last long. And then we have the reality TV folks, the celebrities, the Kardashians. I read something that the Kardashians <coughs> have now been the longest running, I think it's 14 years, 2007 <coughs> to 2021. And Kim Kardashian was simply a friend of Paris Hilton, who was Paris Hilton? She was a spoiled rich kid whose family owns Hilton Hotels. What, what had she done to reach celebrity status? Nothing. And the same is true for Kim Kardashian, her friend. And now they've, they've run this multi-billion dollar celebrity status stuff for 14 years. In today's text, we have the story of Jesus healing a man with leprosy. The man comes to him and he gets down on his knees and he says, Lord, I know if you are willing, you can heal me. And Jesus, the scripture says, Jesus was indignant 
But he said, I am willing. And he healed the man. And then he gives, them, he gives him strict instructions. He says, a strong, Scripture says, a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priests, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. In the transfiguration story, which we also read this morning, as they were coming down the mountain, after they had had this grand experience, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus had had this grand experience on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus gave them these, these instructions. Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been risen from the dead. You see, Jesus wasn't seeking celebrity status. When he came into the world, he wasn't seeking celebrity status. And indeed, what he was concerned would happen, happened. Once people began to talk about the healings that Jesus was doing, the miraculous things that he was doing in people's lives, throngs and throngs and throngs of people came to Jesus. Jesus didn't come to be a great physician, a master healer. He came to proclaim God's love to the world. He came to bring salvation to the world. But because all these people came to him with their physical and emotional needs, he couldn't even... The scripture goes on to say that because this man that he healed went out and told others Jesus could no longer enter the towns openly, but he had to stay outside in lonely places. Yet the people still brought more people to him for him to heal. It's not that Jesus didn't want to do the healings, but he knew his mission was much bigger than that. It was the salvation of the world. But because he cared so much, when the people came to him with need, just like the man in today's scripture, he says, Lord, I know if you're willing. Jesus was willing because he cared for him. So he, he did these acts of healing because he cared for the people. But that wasn't his mission. And he knew that wasn't his mission. But those acts of healing, they were congruent with his love for people. They showed His love and God's love for people. And that's why Jesus did those healings. That's why He still provides answers to our prayers today. Because He does care for us and love us. We've spoken about this before. It is very important for our witness as it was for Jesus' witness. For his words, words of love and salvation, to be matched by his deeds. The two had to be congruent. They had to match up. If he says he loves but does nothing to care for those in need, those two are perpendicular. They're not parallel with each other. In our own lives, if we say we love, but are always hurting. They're not congruent. They're perpendicular. They're not parallel. Our words and our actions, they do have to match up. As Jesus' words and actions did. I urge all of us to make our lives as congruent as possible. Now, we're not, we're not Jesus. So you know what? In our lives, we, we do mess up. And sometimes they become perpendicular. Our words and our actions, they're, they're not the same thing. And we hurt. We hurt with our words, with our actions. We hurt one another. Ask for God's forgiveness. But work at trying to get our lives, your lives, our lives, more congruent with what we say and what we do. Jesus did that. Over and over and over in Scripture, He provided healing, care, 
to anyone who came to him. Remember last week's story. Peter's mother-in-law is ill. He goes to her house, heals her. Over and over in Scripture, you can read the healing miracles of Jesus. That's not why he came. But he cared. If folks are going to get our gospel message, the message of God's salvation, if they're going to get it from us, they too have to know that we care. We can't just tell them about God's salvation. We have to show them God's love and care. There was a woman who came to a relationship with Christ. She was 92. She lived in a nursing home. She had diabetes. And over the course of her lifetime, she had lost first part of her foot, then her whole foot. Then she lost the other foot. Then she lost her legs. Above the knee, she was confined to a wheelchair. She knew Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. So in the nursing home, she wheeled herself from room to room. Every day, she wheeled herself from room to room. And she shared the love of Christ with others. She spoke to them about her personal relationship. And she encouraged them to have a personal relationship with Christ. She lost her limbs. She eventually lost her life. But she had a relationship with Christ personally that required her, she felt, to share that with others. And she did it even with the limitations that she had. You and I don't have those limitations here this morning. But if we do have limitations, there are ways to overcome them. May our words and our actions speak to the world of God's love through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us go before God in the spirit of prayer. We thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to gather this morning. It's been a few weeks since we've been able to be together, and just seeing one another, just being in the presence of one another is helpful to us. We indeed hope that soon we will be able to get back to life in a more normal kind of manner and routine. But we are still very concerned about this virus and the illnesses that it's causing in people. We thank you for healing that you've provided to some who have had the virus. We continue to pray for those caretakers, medical staff, wisdom for scientists as they continue to run tests and determine how effective the vaccines are with the new strains of the virus. Lord, we pray for our nation, for its leaders, as they make decisions that affect us all. We continue to pray for all those that we've lifted up here in need of your healing spirit today. Lord, you are aware of their pains, their hurts. You are aware of the places where they are addicted to perhaps alcohol, drugs, for the families that have lost loved ones due to these addictions, we pray. And for those acts of violence that we do not understand, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, for the ability to move beyond the grief and the sorrow of these losses. Hear our prayers and each of our needs, particularly as we bring them to you. Lord, knowing that you don't always answer our prayer as we desire, but you do answer it according to your will and purpose. Help us to understand that. All this we pray in your name. Praying as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With every breath, we give thanks to God's holy name. Praise God in your daily activities. And share the good news of God's love and God's faithfulness. Amen. Our closing hymn is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.